Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your February 20th to the 28th, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. So we clear away the dust. Virgo, February 20th to the 28th, 2022, Virgo. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay. So these three. Just turn that around. Just where it kicks. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So at the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The top is our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side is the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At our root, we have the sun, which is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. And we have temperance, which is all about balance. So there's going to be joy that's coming into our life as we're finding our balance, as we're finding our footing, and as we're understanding ourselves. Temperance is also Sagittarius energy. So if we have Sagittarius within our natal chart, this comes through very powerfully at our root. Our inner self. We start off with the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is carrying a very heavy burden. We have the seven of wands feeling like we always have to defend ourselves and the star that's our dreams and our wishes and what we desire and so it's been a long road to what we wish for to what we want within our lives and it's almost like we have to remember that at the root there there's balance and success because inwardly it's like i'm always on the defensive i'm carrying more than i feel like i can handle my dreams seem to be coming last always and that's that's a frustrating place to be that is a very aggravating place to be because we we do feel like we're, we're giving it our all all so do be mindful of this the seven of pentacles and the the three of swords that makes perfect sense is at our heart so the seven of pentacles is all about patience we have to have patience it's at divine timing not our timing which is a super frustrating and cliched thing to say but it's really important the three of swords is our heartbreak and our pain and our disappointment but it's asking us what have you learned you know what have you learned from this heartbreak and pain because it can be the wound that defines our lives for the rest of our lives it can be that pain that we live in we just live in that pain and we all know people who do that who live in the pain of you know financial dis collapse of you know divorce of you know heartbreak and pain and, and of, of heartbreak you know and of disappointment and of not getting the job that they want you know financial collapse is is a big one and that's you know and, and divorce is too but everything is is intense and does it get to rule our lives does it get to be the way that we define ourselves first or the way that people define us no it doesn't get to. it doesn't it doesn't get to have that power here 
And so we need to have patience as we take the swords out of our backs and as we take the swords into our hands and say, this is that hurt. I'm naming it. I'm claiming it. And I'm arming myself with that knowledge now. I'm not letting it rule me anymore. This is a, a take back your power sort of time, Virgo. And it brings us to the Ten of Pentacles, prosperity, success, bounty, abundance in the public arena. And the hangman, we see things differently now. We see things differently than we have seen things before. And that becomes a very powerful way for us to move forward. That becomes a very powerful claiming of ourselves. So let's look at the energy we have to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. The chariot. We have to be mindful during this time of the emotions getting the better of us and of us just being ruled by split second emotional decisions so that's going to be something to be very aware of also people coming in emotionally you know kind of trampling over us they're just it's it's emotional chaos i do see this as a person who just kind of like their emotions always trump your own emotions their problems are always more than our problems are and so here it's just a sense of like why are you ruling me like what what is this it's, yeah, that's very much it. It's like, well, wait a minute. You have to calm down because the thing is, is that they can rile us up. They can get us to a place where it's like, you're right. It's not fair. You know, you know what? It's not this. It's not that. And so then they can take our lives, which at the root, you know, is moving forward in happiness, but we feel burdened and we feel like our dreams are so far off. And then it makes us bitter. It makes us angry. It has, it pushes things out even further. So do be mindful of that. Our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. This is creativity. This is the sacral chakra. This is bringing in that creative energy into our lives. The sacral chakra holds our creative energy. It holds our sensual energy, but it also holds all the trauma drama from this life and from past lives. So just being aware that this is coming forward during this time and that we need to look at the creativity within our lives with what we want and what we're discovering and who it is that we are and how it is that we get to move forward for us the opening up of that door so that's going to be really quite big sagittarius energy here at our root aquarius energy here in our inner self and yeah all right and we have the astrology i'll link it in the description box below in a separate reading just to kind of give everybody a chance to digest piece by piece everything that goes on so at our root here we have the sun again happiest card whole entire deck coming forward there is a real sense of joy and prosperity and and a blossoming into ourselves and what we want this warmth and this and this beauty coming forward it's kind of like when you have a really good spring day after a long hard winter after mud season you know after all the ickiness and it's like wow this is beautiful. That's the energy that's coming over us during this time, Virgo. It's like, this is beautiful. This is this is what I've wanted. This is what I've needed. And it comes in a sense from balance. It comes and the light shines first. So there's something here where we get inspired. There's something here where the door starts to open. We're looking at things differently. And then all of a sudden, the, not all of a sudden, but then we start to have this harmony in our lives again this balance in ourselves this understanding of what we want and where we're headed and this you know this increase of emotional awareness this increase of you know what we want in the waking world in our everyday life and there's a sense of harmony that comes over so at our root there's this harmonizing joy now are people going to want to take away our joy absolutely when anybody sees the sun shining within any one person they think well why you and not me and it's like so they take us by acts and it's like, you know what? You don't get to take away my blessings. And we have to be very mindful of this because this is light within us. But then because we just feel overburdened and a bit tired, you know, a bit like run down at times during this time because we're coming to a completion of of the work that we carry, of what we're heading towards with our passion and what we discover. We're also coming to the completion of of a financial lesson. So this is a work lesson here inwardly. And this is a financial, you know, prosperity, prosperity that we're entering into the public arena. Everything looks really good. People are going to look at you and be like, wow, Virgo really has their stuff together. Or wow, Virgo is so blessed. They're not going to see the inner turmoil. So when they see the light shining within you, they're going to be like, hey, wait a minute, you know, I want that for me. So just be just be mindful of it. The 10 of wands, you're going to have if it's at work, everything's put on your plate. If it's at home, it's like you're the one who's supposed to clean up everything, get everything going, you know, and it's like enough is enough. So the the 10 of wands is looking at things and really making that conscious choice because it is 
a conscious realization where we say, you know what, I'm worth more than just looking down at the dirt on my shoes every single day. So it doesn't even have to mean that the workload changes. What changes is our attitude towards it. And it's like, okay, listen, I might have to be doing everything at work right now, but I need to get to the place or I need to get to a job where it's not always put on my shoulders and I'm not always just taken advantage of. So that can be a change in also the way that we're handling things. Instead of saying yes to things all the time, we can start saying no. And that's, that's powerful. As a, as a people pleaser myself, you know, that is something that is, is, is hard to do. But here at, at our inner selves, we need that. We need that Virgo to be able to say, no, you know, this is enough. Also handing people back their burdens. You know, you will clean up your mess. You know, you, you will, you know, bring your dishes to the table type or to the sink type of thing, or even to the table, you know, you're going to chip in because it's not all on me. And that's, that's very important because it brings us to the seven of wands. And it's like, I'm tired of all these battles. The seven of wands is one battle after another, after another, after another. And so we're always on the defensive and feeling like we have to fight and feeling like there's a fight to come. So spirit's really saying here is like, defend what you have. Absolutely. Don't let it to go to like, you know, hell in a handbasket is, is definitely true here, but also don't sacrifice your happiness, your prosperity, your desire for everybody else. It, it, it's just not going to work out well. It just isn't. It brings us to the star. The star is, you know, that Aquarius energy coming forward. It is what we wish for. It is what we, we truly want. There can also be a sense of, you know, if I had time, I would be able to do X, Y, Z. And so here the star is, is saying, what is it that you deeply desire? What is it that we need to make time for in our lives now? Not what is it that, you know, everybody else is demanding from us. The star is the soul's wish. And so it's what divinity sees within us that we are really longing for. It's not what we cross our fingers for. So know that this wish is being granted. It is. It is. It, it sounds funny because we're going to be like, oh, no, it's not. During this time, there's, there's just some sort of frustration that we feel like we're hitting a wall, hitting a wall. This wish is being granted. It's going to be granted in a way that we didn't expect. It's going to be granted in a way that we hadn't seen before. And it starts to really open us to this place of like, oh, like, oh, okay. And because it's not what we're expecting, we're looking over here and this wish is being granted over here. Divinity is like, listen, have patience, have patience. And we're going to know this emotionally. It's like, I need to have patience because the seeds are planted. Everything's growing. I'm doing my best. I'm working my hardest. And now I can see things really starting to move forward towards prosperity, towards abundance, towards what I want and need within my life. And so that becomes a game changer. So here... It, it's on the one hand, knowing patience. And on the other hand, you know, being like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just the same old, same old garbage, nonsense, you know, hurt, pain, disappointment again and again and again. And spirit is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Look at the hurt that we have been through. And instead of like pushing it down or shoving it in the back of the closet and saying, oh, I'm not looking at that. It's acknowledging it. It's saying, you know what? This hurt me. This was something I need to look at. This is something I need to name because I'm taking the sword out of my back. I'm taking myself from being this victim to being a victor i'm i'm moving to the light to the sun to to the to the glory that is me and i'm finding that balance within me and part of that balance comes from acknowledging the pain that i have been through acknowledging my wounds and so saying oh no i'm fine or oh no that was that was that was okay or that it really didn't get me angry or that wasn't as you know as frustrating or hurtful as you know i thought it was i was just making something out of nothing no it's saying all right i acknowledge this pain i acknowledge this hurt it wasn't okay. You know, we could be carrying this around for years, decades. And now we're saying enough is really enough. And it brings us to this place where we start to have prosperity coming into our lives in a really real way. This is inheritance. This is family. This is prosperity. This is bounty that moves us forward. Now, it would be great to have an inheritance. It would be great to have a check show up in the mail, right? But this is also a prosperity that lasts for generations, that a wealth that starts to move us forward towards success, towards bounty, towards, you know, abundance. And it can be an idea. It can be, you know, a, a putting things in savings. It could be also looking at things and saying, you know what, I don't have money for savings. I don't have the luxury for X, Y, Z. And yet I am always beaten down. Like it is always falling on my shoulders. It can be looking at things and saying, I'm going to start, you know, kind of bettering things. I'm going to start, you know, moving out of this chaotic situation. And that sounds astoundingly easy to say, and it's astoundingly hard to do. But what we're going to be doing here is like, I've come to this conclusion, and now I'm seizing the gold, you know, and that and that's really it. I'm seizing the opportunity. So if there's like a class being offered, 
take it. You know, if there's a webinar that comes up and you're like, oh, I've always been interested in that, take it. You know, look at things, open up the doors. The most unbelievable ways forward can, can come to people and can embrace our lives and, and bring us to a place of freedom and abundance that we would have never have expected. And there's something that comes forward here where it's like, I'm happy, I'm prosperous, and I'm bountiful. And that's where I get to stay. You know, that's that's what I get to have within my life. And the hangman, it's all because we're looking at things differently. It's it's waiting and rebirth and sacrifice and reflection. You know, it's very much the sense of, you know, when Odin hung upside down from the tree in Norse mythology, he lost an eye. He sacrificed an eye to gain eternal sight. It's like I sacrifice having to be kind of mocked or ridiculed or, or shunned for looking at things differently. But my difference of view or my difference of of insight, my creative, you know, inspirational spark. That's what's leading to the prosperity. That's what's leading to breaking down the barriers. And we have to just be mindful because during this time, we might find ourselves working multiple jobs. We might find ourselves, you know, pushing things forward in a way that gets us to where it is that we want to be working on that project, working on starting that business or, you know, that, that hobby that we've always wanted. We just have to make sure that we don't put so much on our plate that nothing becomes enjoyable anymore. That's just going to be a really real thing because we're moving towards prosperity and success and abundance. And we have to be mindful that as we're being patient, we don't get too much in our own heads. And because we're way down, because we're tired, because we're on the defensive, because, you know, the dreams that we thought would, would be here by now are taking their, their sweet time, that we don't look at all the hurt and the pain and say, that, that's all I'm worthy of, you know, because that's just not true. There's light and there's beauty coming in at the root. And that's, and that's just extraordinary. And it's in the public arena too. People see it. People see it. So people are going to be like, <clears throat> excuse me, Virgo, you don't deserve that. And that's just their jealousy speaking. That's just their, their anger, their hurt speaking from, from their own lives. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not for you, you know, just really be aware of that. It moves us to our inner self, not our inner selves, our energy to be mindful of. And it's the strength card. It's Leo energy. It's being bullied. It's definitely being bullied and it's emotionally being bullied during this time. It is somebody who you know, it's, this could be a loved one who's emotionally manipulating us. This could be, you know, somebody who's taking advantage of our better nature. Just really be mindful of this. Yeah, it could be a boss where they're like, you know, well, you have to do it because I said so. And in that sort of abusive situation, we have to, and in any sort of abusive situation, we have to get ourselves free. I mean, that's going to be a really important thing here. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, and that's peace. This is the crown chakra, and it's saying here, I need to crown myself with peace and with harmony and with beauty and with connection because I need to move forward in this peace for me and I need to open this door for me. And it's it's very much embracing the present, the now. It's really holding to the gift and the discovery of ourselves. It moves us to our subconscious rooted energy and that is the death card. That is Scorpio energy. It is very much a transformation. It's a shedding an old skin. It's a acknowledging that I am a part of me has died, right? A dying away of the old self and a rebirth of the new. But as that part has died, I have been reborn into the person that I am now, into what I am discovering within my life, into the different stages of my existence. You know, we're always constantly being reborn. And this is very much also looking at the fact that we're not going to share things with everybody. There's there's a real need here to to look at what we need, what we want, kind of the secrets that we need to keep for ourselves. It's not everybody's business and move forward in that energy, move forward in that knowledge. It brings us to our subconscious in ourself. And that's the sun. Once again, the sun shines, the happiest card in the whole entire deck comes forward. There's brilliance, there's connection. There is a sense of this is the beacon. This is, you know, the lighthouse guiding me forward. This is the brilliance that is me. And we need to let ourselves shine. There's happiness coming in. We need to not look for, you know, when the next shoe is going to drop. We're going to think when the, the happiness comes in, it's going to be like, oh, this is too good to be true. Or, oh, no, this couldn't possibly be. It's like, no, let it in and let us embrace it. It moves us to our subconscious emotional self. And that's the, the seven of swords. We really have been through the rigor. I mean, this is betrayals, hurts, pains, disappointments. This is taking up our knowledge, what we know, what we desire, and it's moving forward. It's leaving some things behind. We're having somebody help us. They're carrying a load, which 
you know, it's, it's just sweet that they're carrying it. It's kind of like a little kid saying, I help you when you're, you know, unpacking the groceries or when you're, you know, folding the laundry. And it's like, okay, thanks. <laughs> it's not going to feel as helpful as it actually is. So this person is going to be really good. What we have to be mindful of is also carrying hurts and pains from our childhood forward and having that story just be a constant part of our reality. It's like, no, no, it doesn't get to win. It just doesn't get to win. It moves us to our subconscious emotional, not emotional, public arena self. And that's the tower. Things have fallen apart. They have. And it's acknowledging that they have fallen apart, that it hasn't gone the way that I wanted it to. But this is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, throwing us out of our comfort zone. And it's acknowledging that I'm not in my comfort zone anymore. And that maybe I haven't been for a really long time. And now I'm moving in enlightenment because this is destruction, enlightenment, release. It's like I've been released from what has been bounding me or what has been denying me. And I do feel this is, you know, my financial success, my bounty, my, my, my abundance. I'm looking at things differently because I've walked through the rubble, because I've been through the pain, because the disappointment has definitely been a part of my life. And if it wasn't for the fact that it wasn't always an easy street, if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, I had to work this hard, I wouldn't be where I am. And that's what we're taking away from the tower. The tower is a change and it's a profound change. Others don't have to understand it. It's not their business. It's not their life. But we understand it. We understand that change that hit us. And it might not be a change that anybody thinks is a tower time. It's not theirs to define. It is ours. So know that it could be the tiniest, littlest thing. It could be something that we heard, something that we watched that really got us thinking, that really started to you know, make us look at things in a different way. That, that opens the door. It really does open the door. And it's like, I release so much of what has been holding me back, what isn't right for me anymore. All right. All right, Virgo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of ourselves and of this time. And also that we know that things are changing for the better, that we let the light shine through because it will be so easy to just get bogged down and bogged down and bogged down. All right. So let's take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.